guys, so for today's video, I am going to be taking you through the process of a typical blonding client. This is this client's first time with me. She has faded out blonde ends, a little bit of regrowth, and she's wanting to deepen her base and go a little bit brighter. So we're doing a bright blonde with some low maintenance grow out. So I am going to be using Wella Blondor today with 20 volume and of course my Fermar foils. And I'm just gonna walk you through the process of how I part off for a full highlight, how I highlight, how I smudge and tone, and all of that fun stuff. So if you're interested in watching this, stay tuned. Okay, the first step to any color process is mixing it up. So I am using Wella Blondor 20 volume today. My client has level six regrowth and then blonde ends. We are doing a full highlight because we've never actually done a full highlight on her before. We've always done partials or halves. So you can see right here, she does have quite a bit of regrowth. She does have some blonde underneath because our half highlight does put a few foils underneath. So for those pieces, I am just going to touch the regrowth but then where it gets darker further up, we are going to add more blonde in. Oh my baby, got me staring at you. So I'm crazy, won't you bend that back for me? We won't stop, got your feet both locked. You get to flop with me. So the reason that I'm making this video today is kind of to educate clients on everything that goes into a blonding service. I talk about this in a lot of my classes when we touch on social media, but I think it's really important to educate your clients on the process of going blonde, whether it's a balayage, highlights, color correction. I think it's awesome when stylists break down the timing, the pricing, the formulations, everything like that in their posts because clients really don't understand sometimes that it's not just a blonde color we're throwing on their heads. It does take a lot of effort and a lot of work, and there's a reason that we charge what we charge for services like this. So the actual highlight is just step one of the blonding process. Now that she has been processed fully, we are going to pull her foils out. She lifted so, so well, so happy with the result we got. And then the first thing I always do after pulling the foils out is do a clarifying shampoo. I use Maxi Wash by Kevin Murphy since we are a Kevin Murphy salon. And I feel like this really just helps remove any buildup, impurities, and gives me a really clean canvas to tone with. And then after that, I either take Olaplex or Fanola's Bond Connector or really just any deep conditioner will work. And I uh, massage that in mids to ends. And that's going to give her a treatment while I'm putting her root smudge on. And it also kills two birds with one stone because it creates a barrier. So if that root smudge does slide down, it won't create any splotchiness. So I am using 7N7NA on her base. I always comb through first before I start applying and I am doing just a shadow on her today. I'm not doing a smudge, I don't want it too far down. I just wanna give her a little bit of depth at the base so that she can have a natural grow out but still feel really blonde. Her blonde is gonna be somewhat dimensional as well. The blondes that she has, we are gonna make pop and stand out. But since we did a highlight and not like an all over pleat, she still is going to have some dimension, which is ideal because since we're doing a root shadow, that dimension will help kind of pull all together. And when her natural does grow in, it will look really soft and blended, which is actually ideal for this client because she only comes one once every like four to six months. So it's perfect for her. I am using Redken Shades EQ for this root shadow. We will let it sit about five minutes and then we will tone her ends. So 
So as I am applying this base, I just want to let you guys know that the reason us hairdressers do steps like this is because it really does enhance the hair and it gives the client a really natural grow out so they can go longer in between appointments, but also just gives them more of an expensive look. Even if I'm doing a blonde that wants to be solid blonde to the root, I still tap their hair out because this really does help blend everything in, makes it look a little more expensive and gives them longevity, even if they don't necessarily notice depth at their base. Even if your client doesn't necessarily need a root shadow or a root smudge, I always recommend at least toning the ends a little bit differently than the top. I set them up like this because A, you can get a more accurate read. If you just tone back in the bowl, it is a little bit harder because you will miss areas, especially underneath. And then also the base does lift a little differently than the ends because most of the time it is natural color if you're doing like root regrowth or anything like that. And so it is going to look differently than the previously colored hair. So even if you're toning with the same levels, I think this is a really clean way to do it. So I'm crazy. Watch your bend that back for me. We won't stop. Got your feet both locked. You get to flat with me. I can take you down for a ride. I take you around my life. Jim walking, cross walking, lip locking with you. Okay, so I rinsed out that root shadow and I am now toning her ends. I used Redken Shades EQ 9P 9N on her. This is really one of my favorite combos if they want like an ashy blonde but a little more neutral. The N and the P together just make like this perfect combo. So we are just putting that on, saturating through. And then with shades, I never really leave it on a certain amount of time. I just watch it really closely and rinse when I think it's done. I never walk away from shades because it does work so quickly. So when you are using shades, make sure that you are careful and you are watching as you go. Oh my baby, got me staring at you. So I'm crazy, watch you bend that back for me. We won't stop, got your feet both locked. You get to flop with me. I can take you down for a ride. I take you around my life. Jaywalking. All right, and one of the most important steps to a blonding service or any color service in general is the style. So I always do a leave-in. This is a Fanola leave-in that I absolutely adore and have been using a lot lately. And then we're going to give her a good blowout. And I am so, so, so sorry, you guys. I know you hate when I do this, but I didn't get a very good after photo or after video. This is really all I got, and I hope you guys can see the color well enough but she did have to leave and she just left with straight hair. I never usually do that, but she was in a hurry, so that's why. And I'm so sorry I didn't get a good shot, but you can see here how beautiful it turned out. And I hope that this video gave you a little insight on what a blonding process looks like, and I hope it helped. Don't forget to like and subscribe, you guys. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.